Welcome to the World Radio Communication Conference 2023, WRC 23, being held here in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, where I've got the great pleasure of being joined in the studio today by Natalia Donoho, who is the head of the World Meteorological Organization Space Systems and Utilization Division. Natalia, welcome to the studio. Hello, and thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. This is my first WRC, so I'm really happy to be here representing meteorological and climate community. So thank you for having me. Now, I'd like to start off by asking you, why is it important for WMO to be participating here at the World Radio Communication Conference? Uh, WMO, through its hydrological and meteorological services, and also through the space agencies, collect Earth's observations in, the, in a wide range of essential services to observe water, climate and related environmental issues. And of course, information uh, gathered through these observations is important, is vitally important for the global community, specifically for the insurance safety and property protection. And observing networks also important for WMO integrated global observing system, which is critically dependent on radio frequencies. So I'm hoping that national administrations here continue to recognize that use of spectrum of observation application have a considerable societal and economical value. We urge administrations to take into account the protection of Earth's observing system and specific frequency band because those are important and vital for protecting lives and property. I'm hoping they will continue to recognize the spectrum uh, bands for Earth's observing systems, including space and uh, surface-based observations. Now, collaboration between WMO and ITU is very significant when it comes to weather and climate observation. Perhaps I can ask you to elaborate on how the two organizations work together. Well, um, WMO and ITU have a long, st long time standing collaboration. In fact, we're like sister organizations in terms of the meteorological data and digital technologies. But I also think it's important to note that um, ITU is our partner in Early Warning for All initiative and I think we will be working real closely for the next few years on this important initiative that is spearheaded by UN Secretary Gutierrez. So we're, we're really working, looking forward to working with ITU even more. Now let's talk about spectrum. Spectrum is one of the key topics of conversation here at the World Ready Communication Conference. A lot of decisions being made about spectrum. What specific spectrum issues is WMO particularly concerned about? And how will they affect the work of WMO in the future? So we have several issues here, but the most important ones we're advocating the protection of portions of the spectrum critical for observations, in particular sea surface temperature and microwave observations from space, and also the introduction of the topic of space weather, uh, which would allow in the future in 2027 plus uh, to argue for protection of frequency critical for these observations. As you know, some people don't recognize about certain events in space weather, but if we're talking about billion dollar disasters, this could become something even bigger if uh, you know, uh, event happen in the future and could wipe out a lot of uh, technology and satellites and things like that. But also sea surface temperature, you know, it's important for forecasting of hurricanes in the Caribbean, for example. So we're really hoping that those frequency will be protected. And finally, the UN Climate Conference, COP28, is also taking place here in Dubai. Its work starts tomorrow. I wanted to ask you, what is the role of Earth observation technologies, such as satellites and remote sensing, in monitoring climate change? The Earth's observations, of course, are important for monitoring climate change and disasters and verification of predictions. And I think the, because the observations are collected around the globe and the involvement international community with this in policy making specifically, it's important to understand the value of specifically space-based observations and uh, in the monitoring climate change and environment. I'm really happy that um, events are happening in the same country in parallel almost, so we can actually have uh, discussions with people who are attending both events, for example. So it's real convenient. Not just that, but administrations and, and specific policy uh, policymakers as well. So. Well, Natalia, thank you so much for joining us in the studio and we look forward to catching up with you again very soon. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. And if you've enjoyed this interview, why not check out our other interviews on the ITU YouTube channel, as well as our podcasts on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And for further information, why not visit our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in.